The 2006 film Marie Antoinette is an intriguing revisionist period piece about a teenage girl born into Austrian royalty who becomes the Queen of France. It's a spectacular, sumptuous depiction of her extravagant life at Versailles before the advent of the French Revolution. But it's also the story of another woman born into wealth and privilege. The film's writer and director, Sofia Coppola. As the daughter of legendary director Francis Ford Coppola, Sofia was born into a filmmaking dynasty that includes her brother, Roman Coppola, who was second unit director on Marie Antoinette, her cousin Jason Schwartzman, who played Louis XVI in the movie, and of course, her cousin, Nicolas Cage. After a few roles in her father's films and an internship with Chanel, Coppola dropped out of Cal Arts and started a Japanese clothing line with Sonic Youth's Kim Gordon. She married and later divorced film director Spike Jones, aka Adam Spiegel of the Spiegel catalog family. And in 1999, she directed her first feature, The Virgin Suicides, at the ripe old age of 27. Sofia Coppola is a prime example of Hollywood nepotism, an issue that has gained traction in recent years. Fueled by the impression that the film industry is a highly exclusive gated community where the children of the rich and famous are directly siphoned into the industry, leaving equally capable outsiders outside without access to the same opportunities. Nepotism is nothing new and its presence in Hollywood shouldn't surprise anyone, but it's a touchy subject contained within broader issues of class, elitism, and inheritance. In the case of Sofia Coppola, who's had to contend with charges of nepotism for most of her life, the advantages she enjoyed have resulted in an impressive body of work, now spanning over 20 years. For anyone disturbed by the blatant unfairness of Hollywood nepotism, Coppola's rise as a genuine auteur might be held up as a positive example, a woman making excellent use of the opportunities handed to her. An intriguing aspect of much of her work is her keen awareness of her privilege and it's the key to Marie Antoinette. The story itself is pretty simple. A teenage girl has to leave home and move to a new place. She has to marry this guy whom she doesn't really have any chemistry with because everybody says she has to. After some trial and error, she eventually succeeds at accomplishing what everyone expects from her. Meanwhile, she spends most of her time having fun, dabbling in various pursuits, and falls in love with some other dude with whom she has a brief affair. The story ends with her being abruptly forced to move again. Much of the film plays like a John Hughes movie, set in 18th century Versailles instead of 1980 Chicago, substituting Molly Ringwald for Kirsten Dunst. Half of the soundtrack is comprised of 80s post-punk and new wave music, from Gang of Four and Susie and the Banshees, to Adam and the Ants, who are at least akin to the 18th century fashion-wise. Should we retire to make love all night? <laughs> and then there's this dude. Four times last night wasn't enough. Directly addressing the viewer, like Ferris Bueller. All of these anachronisms come from a time when Coppola was a teenager, which suggests a semi-autobiographical layer to the narrative. Marie Antoinette and her court party hard throughout the film, and their antics are clearly meant to mirror those of Coppola's own peers experiencing pleasure without consequences and consumption without limits. A lot like the kids in Coppola's 2013 film, The Bling Ring, which is very much a companion piece to Marie Antoinette. Both films display a materialistic mindset that hasn't changed in over 200 years. Marie and her girls are highly conscious of their status, which is at the very core of their identities, and they guard it viciously against class outsiders, notably Madame Dewberry, royal mistress, and commoner, treated by the rest of the court with utter contempt. Madame Dewberry, incidentally, is played by Asio Argento, daughter of film director Dario Argento. Louis XV is played by Rip Torn, cousin to Sissy Spacek. Marie's brother, Emperor Joseph II, is played by Danny Houston, grandson of Walter Houston, half-brother of Angelica Houston, uncle of Jack Houston, and son of film director John Huston. In the Roman Polanski film Chinatown, John Huston plays Noah Cross, LA's most powerful tycoon, a man who takes the idea of keeping it all in the family to its logical extreme. 
In this scene, he explains what it is that drives his insatiable lust for power, but he may as well be also talking about the motivation behind nepotism and inheritance. I just want to know what you're worth, over 10 million? Oh my, yes. Why are you doing it? How much better can you eat? What can you buy that you can't already afford? The future, Mr. Gitz. The future. Now, where's the girl? When Marie is brought to Versailles, her single most important duty is to produce an heir to the throne. Continuing the royal bloodline is the only thing that matters. Bestowing power and privilege to biological offspring is the means to a kind of fake immortality that ensures ownership of the future while validating the significance of all previous generations. Coppola depicts the queen as being well aware of the situation, unlike her clueless, uncaring public persona. Let them eat cake. That's such nonsense. I would never say that. Coppola is cognizant of how global elites are perceived by the 99%. She includes this expository device that economically explains what's happening outside of Versailles, utilizing a punk aesthetic. The design of the film title itself references the Sex Pistols' anti-monarchist anthem, so she's well aware of the grievances of common people. Despite that awareness, Coppola, like Marie, can still marvel at the design of a shoe, a ladybug, a sunrise. She is not one to start railing against the injustices of the system. She's not Jane Fonda. In the Versailles of her mind, Sophia, via Marie, yields to the revolution and offers her head to the mob, today wielding smartphones instead of torches. The gesture seems to say, I understand your rage, but this is the world I was born into a thought that must cross the minds of other conscientious rich kids, most of whom would still fight tooth and nail to defend their privilege if ever threatened. But Marie accepts her fate with stoic grace. She is Sofia Coppola's hero, her literally me character. The film ends with Marie wistfully bidding farewell to Versailles. Her attitude is best summed up by the real Marie Antoinette's final words which she said after stepping on her executioner's foot. Pardon me, sir. I did not do it on purpose. <laughs>